In this module, we will learn about how to create and deploy a Rack database in 11G R2 environment. I'm using a Oracle Linux 5.5 and I am using Oracle VirtualBox. In this particular case, I'm gonna be using two VMwares. Here I've got Node 1. To verify that we're in Node 1, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a terminal window and we can see that I'm pointing to Rack 1. I'm gonna come down here and open up my other session. And if I do an open terminal here, we can see that I'm on Rack 2. I'm using Oracle's Linux with VirtualBox and I'm using two nodes. Let me come back over here to Node 1. Now in Node 1, we have already installed the grid infrastructure software. We've already installed the database software. To verify this, I'm gonna to go to my user one app, Oracle product, do an LS here. I can see I have the database software. I look at DB home. There it is. Okay, to verify that the grid infrastructure has been installed, I'm gonna to go to user01, and then I'm gonna to go to 11.2.0, and then underneath here, I have the directory called grid. So we've installed both the grid infrastructure software as well as the database software. I also want to verify that my cluster services are up and running. So let me go over here and do a .orenv to set my Oracle environment, set that to plus ASM, in this particular case, it's going to be plus ASM1. I'm going to do a CRS, CTL, STAT, RES-T. The STAT stands for status, and the RES stands for resource, and dash T gives it the tabular format. So we can see here that the rack is up and running on both node 1 and node 2. The networking is up and running on node 1 and node 2. And my disk groups are available as well. The other thing that I'm going to do is do a server control status node apps. And if I do a service control status node apps, that's gonna tell me if all of the rack resources are up and running as well. We can see that the VIP is running on both node one and node two. The network is enabled and it's running on both node one and node two. The GSD is not enabled and that's fine. The ONS daemon is running on both node one and node two and the EONS daemon is running on both node one and node two. So I think we're in pretty good shape here. Now remember, we also have to pick the primary node or the node that we're gonna install the rack from. Typically, that's always going to be node one. In some rare occasions, people may install the rack environment from node two, but you always want to install the rack environment from your first node or select a node that's going to be your primary node to install from. Doesn't mean that the rack won't start or won't run. It's just easier for manageability. What happens is that what Oracle installs the software, they assign the node that you're installing it from as node one. So for some reason, you install from node two Oracle's going to think it's node one. And so now you're going to have node two is actually node one and node one is actually node two. And it's just a maintenance headache. So I would recommend to install from your primary nodes. Typically, we're going to start from node one. Now, let me come over here and go to my database home directory. Please remember you go to your database home directory, not your grid home directory. And I'm going to go to DB home bin. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to run DBCA. So from here, I'm just going to type in DBCA. And this is going to be very similar to what we did when we installed the database in a single instance environment. But we are going to go and install it from a clustered environment. And we're going to use the same tool, DBCA, which is Oracle's Database Configuration Assistance tool. Now what this software is going to do, it's going to identify both node 1 and node 2. It's going to identify that it's a clustered install. And then it will install to node 1 first, and then install to node 2 second and go ahead and create our databases. So here we are creating a real application database. So we'll hit next. We are going to create a database for the very first time. In this case, we're just gonna go ahead and create a general purpose database. And we are going to give it a database name of ORCL and we're gonna select all. So when we select all, that means we're gonna create this database, effectively this instance for both rack one and rack two. The database name is gonna be ORCL. The SID preference is gonna be ORCL as well. But on node one, the instance name will actually be called ORCL1. And on node two, it's actually gonna be called ORCL2. By default, we're gonna create an admin policy or admin managed database. We could create a policy managed database. We'll get into that a little bit later. But by default, we're just gonna go ahead and create an admin policy database. Let's go ahead and click next. It's gonna ask us, do we want to manage this database through the enterprise manager? Again, the answer is yes. If you take a look at the automatic or the maintenance task, we do want to make sure that this is checked as well. If for some reason you want to disable these maintenance tasks, that's fine. They can be re-enabled at a later point in time. 
but typically we will have them enabled out of the gate. I'm gonna go ahead and use the same password for all accounts, and I'm just gonna give it the password, password one, all lowercase. You can choose whatever password meets the requirements. Here it's gonna yell at me because I didn't meet Oracle's security. That's fine, I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes and continue from there. And in a rack environment, I am gonna use ASM because I've installed the grid infrastructure architecture. The disk groups or the data is gonna be going to the plus data disk group. So if I click next here, it's going to ask me for the password for the ASM, which I believe here was password one. So that's a standard password that I use. And it's gonna ask me, do I want to enable the flash recovery area or the fast recovery area? And I'm gonna say yes. And I'm gonna set that to the plus FRA. And I am gonna go ahead and install the sample schemas. And this would be things like the HR, the OE, the SH, those things. And I'm gonna go ahead and accept the defaults for memory. What I do like to do typically is I like to increase this value from processes from 150 to 300, because I think 150 is typically way too small, especially in a rack environment, because typically most databases will automatically start with about 20 to 25 processes. So if you're only given 150 out of the gate, that really means you only have 125 left for your applications. So I'd say at least 300. If you take a look at character sets, we're gonna use the default character set. A lot of times, if you're gonna be communicating to other non-English speaking databases, you'd probably use a Unicode database. In the connection mode, we're gonna go ahead and stick with the dedicated mode. So let's go ahead and click next. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit next and finish. This will automatically go out and install our database. Now what's gonna happen here is it's gonna give me this database summary, which is just a little HTML page of everything that you've done. These are the initialization parameters. This is the software that we're installing. And this is where we're replacing our data files. So let me go ahead and click okay here. And it's gonna take a second here for that install to complete. So we're gonna go ahead and wait just a moment for this install to complete. Okay, now we've seen that the installation and the creation of the database is complete. This is the screen that we wanna see. We can see that the database has been created, data files have been on plus data, and database control has been enabled on this particular address. So let's go ahead and hit exit out of here. And this is on node one, and I'm just gonna do a PS, EF grep for SMON, and I can see that the ASM instance is up and running and ORC01 is up and running on node one. I'm gonna come over here to node two. Now if I do a PS EF grep on SMON, I can see that the database is up and running on node two as well. Let's just go ahead and double check a couple of things. I'm gonna come back over here to node one, and I'm going to open up the Enterprise Manager console. I'm gonna go ahead and log in to the console and just to verify that things are up and running as well. As that's going on, I'm gonna move this screen around a little bit, set the environment variables. We're gonna set it to plus ASM1, and let's just do the CRS CTL stat res dash T. And if we do that, this is what I'm looking for. OR, which is the resource, RCL is the database name, and DB is the type. And I can see that it is running on both node one as well as node two, and it is currently open. If I want to get into the actual database, I'm going to do the .ORA ENV. I'm going to set my database environment to ORCL. Then here I'm going to do SQL plus system password one at ORCL. And that's going to connect us to this rack instance. Now in a rack environment, I don't select from the V dollar tables. I select from the GV dollar table. So I'm going to select from GV dollar instance. And I can see that it is up and running on both node two, as well as node one. Let's come back over here. And Firefox is giving me a little bit of drama. So let me go ahead and see if I can start a new session and see if ultimately will come up. There it is. It's coming up to a bad web page. So all I have to do is change that web page address. And we're going to change this to HTTPS rack one for 1158 slash EM. Tells me that the secure connection failed, which is what I would expect because it is an HTTPS connection. I'm gonna go ahead and add the exception, get the certificate, confirm the exception. And now if I log in to my enterprise console, we should see the enterprise console is up and running and it's gonna tell me that the database is up and running as well. So it looks to me like we've successfully created our database. The database is created on both node one and node two. Basically all it does is it creates an instance and it is using the disk groups data and plus FRA.